We've now looked at how to define the derivative and using the definition of the derivative to find the derivative of a function. We'll look at two more examples. Let's look at a function. This is now not a polynomial function like the first one. We've got a rational function, 2 over x minus 1. So let's use the definition of the derivative to find this derivative. The definition says to me the derivative is the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h, which is 2 over x plus h minus 1. doesn't have to be in brackets. I'll just leave it there for now. Minus f of x, which is 2 over x minus 1. Everything divided by h. Now, everything divided by h, now I've got fractions over fractions. To me, that's too clumsy. So I'm just going to write, multiply that with 1 over h. That means the same as dividing by h. It's just a little bit neater. All right. Now, as with the previous example on the first video, we are doing some algebraic manipulation before we get to taking the limit. So that limit just carries on. I've got two terms. I want to make it one term. I do that with a common denominator. x plus h minus 1 times x minus 1. My numerator is then 2 times x minus 1 minus 2 times x plus h minus 1 times 1 over h. So that's the limit as h approaches 0. We simplify the top 2x minus 2x minus 2 plus 2. I've got minus 2h over x plus h minus 1, x minus 1, times 1 over h. If you're not happy with my simplification, you can pause here, make another step, and write out that numerator to make sure it simplifies to minus 2h. That gives the limit as h approaches 0. Or that's the same as the limit as h approaches 0 of minus 2 over x plus h minus 1, x minus 1. All right, now we're looking at the limit as h approaches 0. And when we looked at limits, we saw we can simply substitute the value of h in if it doesn't make the denominator 0. So in this case, if I substitute h equal to 0 in, the denominator does not get 0. And I'm left with minus 2 over x minus 1, x minus 1. So it's x minus 1 squared. And later when we look at the rules, you can compare it and see the rules will get you to the same derivative. I just want to make sure you know how to use the definition because that's where it actually comes from. Let's look at the next example. Now we've got a root function. How do we deal with them? If I've got the derivative of g is the limit as h approaches 0, of g of x plus h, so it's the root of x plus h minus 1, minus g of x, so minus the root of x minus 1, everything over h. Now, what do we do here? Yet again, we're going to do some algebraic manipulation because I can't just substitute h equal to naught in. I'm dividing by 0. That's not allowed. So, um, take the limit later. I need to do some algebraic manipulation. And here's a nice technique when you use with using roots. I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator with the same thing, because then it's the same as multiplying with 1. But it's something very specific, and I'm going to write it out and then talk about it. x plus h minus 1 plus the root of x minus 1, divided by x plus h minus 1 plus the root of x minus 1. So first note, I'll tell you where I got it shortly, but first note, I'm just multiplying with 1, so it doesn't change the value. Now, why did I choose that? You'll notice we've got a minus and a plus. Now, if you remember with factorization, the difference between two squares, we know if I've got a minus b times a plus b, I get a squared minus b squared. Now, in this case, I just have root functions, but if I've got a root a minus root b times root a plus root b, I just get the first one squared, which is root a times root a gives me a minus root b times root b gives me b. So that's why I'm doing it. So this is going to get rid of all those roots in the numerator. And let's see where it goes. Then so I will get root of x plus h minus 1 times root of x plus h minus 1 gives me x plus h minus 1. We don't need the brackets. I'm just putting it there. Minus root of x minus 1 times root of x minus 1 is just x minus 1. We need those brackets because it's two terms after the minus divided by h times that whole fraction. So 8 times, put it in brackets, the root of x plus h minus 1 plus the root of x minus 1. 
Okay, so now my denominator is ugly. But you'll see soon that that doesn't matter because things are going to get pretty soon. That's the limit as h approaches 0. What's happening in the numerator? x minus x minus 1 plus 1. I'm left with just a h there and a h in the denominator. Square root of x plus h minus 1 plus the square root of x minus 1. So that limit is the same as the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 over the root of x plus h plus minus 1, sorry, plus the root of x minus 1. Now we can substitute h equal to naught in because it doesn't cause any trouble. There's no h in the denominator anymore. All this fancy work we've been doing got rid of that h in the numerator and the denominator cancelled out. So we don't have that h in the denominator anymore when we look at the limit value. So those limits are the same. So now I can substitute h equal to naught in there and I get 1 over, well, it's the square root of x minus 1 plus the square root of x minus 1. So it's 2 times the square root of x minus 1. So these are just two more examples of non-polynomial functions, how to use the definition of the derivative to find the derivative. From here on, we're going to start looking at shortcuts and at rules to make this process a bit quicker.